politicians which represent big business and the rich to do this for us, this is something that we have. It's a real fight in front of the working class. All right. Thank you, David. Before we get to Congressman Boswell, uh, we need to station on the ID. You are listening to KMA AM 960, FM 99.1. As we continue our debate, Congressman Leonard Boswell, you're up next. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we've come a ways. We have. from this, uh, During this administration, we're losing 750,000, 800,000 jobs a month. And we've had a steady growth. It's up to five. Maybe it's not, it's not enough. We've got to do better. And we all understand that. But we have uh, introduced things like the Jobs Act that the President has. Uh, we, uh, members of the minority side, have uh, made in America uh, type things that uh, try to get things to going. And uh, a number of us have worked very hard on the fact that uh, the infrastructure, our roads, bridges, uh, after hearing the debacle, everybody heard about what happened in Minnesota. We can't let that happen. We have to do our, our infrastructure anyway. So why don't we do that? And uh, it will help commerce, move commerce, move people, and it's something that we, we really must do uh, at some point, and we're falling behind to get out and drive on the roads. I remember driving across on number two when it was new, and wow, what a smooth, wonderful road. It's getting a little rough, needs attention, but then you go off in some of the other roads around, around while well, you know that there's a lot of needs, and uh, it's all the way across the state, it's all the way across the country. And we've got to do this. We have to do that as well. So I, I think Made in America, uh, let's go ahead and activate, do take a get out committee, do some work on the Jobs Act that the President has presented. And, uh, and I, I think we all agree we need to get people to work. That will turn this economy better and quicker than anything else we can do. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman. And uh, now we go to Scott Thatcher. Thank you again. Um, Employment is something that I started my career out uh, after college in the employment field. And one of the things that we have currently today is is we have no com the business has no confidence in the United States, and neither does the consumer. Uh, the biggest problem we have is that without this confidence, we're not going to get these jobs. There are many different things that the current administration could be doing to get jobs created in this country. We have uh, companies that invest overseas, and they make billions of dollars, but in order to bring that money back to the United States, they have to pay 35%. Instead, why aren't we incentivizing companies when they bring that money? If they invest in jobs in the United States, they get a reduced uh, taxation on that. That's one of the things that we could do. There are so many different things that we need we need to accomplish. Decreasing the deficit is the main goal in order to get the confidence back of both the business and the people in the United States. And without decreasing the deficit, our jobs, you can put any jobs bill out there, it's not going to do any good through legislation. We have to do it through making acts and, and reducing our deficit and doing what is right for the country. All right, thank you very much, Scott. And uh, now we go to Congressman Tom Latham. Tom? Thank you very much, Mike. And this, this is the issue I think that everyone is is most concerned about the jobs opportunities out there. Uh, when you go back uh, four years ago, and Congressman Boswell was talking about, uh, you know, we've come a long ways. Well, we haven't come anywhere. It's still 7.8% unemployment, the same as when uh, Congressman Boswell joined President Obama to pass the stimulus, $831 billion of wasted money today, uh, and put our children in debt. That did nothing as far as... Uh, uh, creating jobs or opportunities. Remember the president talking about, uh, well, there weren't quite as many shovel-ready jobs as we thought there was out there. The, the problem is, and, and Scott touched on it, is the fact that there is so much uncertainty out there as far as tax policy for next year, uh, the regulatory burden that businesses have to comply with today. I, I visited a business yesterday that had 48 employees. He would love to hire 12 more people. The fact of the matter is he's not going to hire anybody because if you hire two more and get to 50, you're, you're subjected to a whole new set of regulations that would, would put him out of business. He already said he has 109 regulations that he has to comply with today. That Another two employees would put him over the top. So he is not hiring. He's frozen. Uh, the problem, the burden we have today with uncertainty on taxes, uh, the huge footprint of regulations coming down on businesses of what is causing us not to grow and create jobs. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman Latham. Our next question concerns a topic that 
everyone knows about. We've all been affected by it here in KMA land over the last year or so, the flooding of 2011. As you know, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has been criticized for its management of the Missouri River following the historic flooding of 2011. How much responsibility should the Corps take for the disaster? And what, if any, changes in the Corps' river management practices would you support? This time, Congressman Leonard Boswell. Leonard, you go first. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> well, the Corps has a great responsibility. It's a military organization, you know that, and I've spent a lot of time doing it. I have a lot of respect for them. They pretty much do what we ask them to do. And, uh, the, yes, I think they need to review uh, the situation, and but they're following the guidelines that they got from the previous administrations, uh, Congress, and uh, all those. And, uh, you know, I think they, you know, the situation called global warming is taking place. They need to review and see what's uh, going on. They had the unusual rains, un unusual snow runoff, and so on. And, uh, and so we, we had a, a big demand, and uh, it was tough. Uh, FEMA came through. FEMA was never without money, as some would suggest they were. They were not, and uh, they did a pretty good job. But the Corps, I think, stands ready for any new guidelines and to sit down and to design whatever plan we, the people, want them to do. And uh, so I, uh, I take a little exception of people who want to beat on the Corps, uh, the, the the military force, if you will, that uh, protects our country, that uh, I don't think it's the right thing to do. They'll respond, make it clear what you wanted them to do, and they'll do it. And as I stood on the levees down here all the way to Hamburg and up and down many times, I know that it's an extreme uh, tough thing on uh, everybody, the homes, the homes, the farms, the businesses. But it was, uh, it was a pleasure to be involved in trying to help the little town of Hamburg uh, survive, and they have, and uh, they're All right, back okay. strong. Congressman, uh, thank you very much. And now we go to Scott Batcher. Well, you know, the amazing thing about that is, is you're trying to predict what Mother Nature is going to do to us. And the difficulty when you get into the flooding and things that are occurring by natural disaster, it's kind of hard to prepare ahead of time. And what we need to do from this is take away of lessons learned of what we can do better moving forward to all of our dikes and all of our bridges and so forth so that these type of disasters don't happen again. Um, there again, I lived through 1993 floods, if you remember those. And those things, and I traveled throughout the Midwest, and everywhere I went I had to find a different road because it was flooded out. And it's nothing that you can predict, and that's the difficulty of dealing with, with this. And the Corps of Engineers did what they could do with the information they had. And it's always easy, and everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon and blame somebody for a disaster. And we have to stop blaming people for dis natural disasters that occur and figure out solutions on how we can make it better so that we're ready for the next disaster. All right, Scott, thank you very much. And now we go to Congressman Tom Latham. Tom? Thank you, Mike. Um, you know, th this is an issue that's extraordinarily important, obviously, with uh, the devastation that occurred last year. I was on the levee by Percival at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and the levee went out that, that night uh, with devastation for thousands of acres of lands and, and the communities up there. And, and that's why I, I was shocked. Uh, Congressman Boswell... When the FEMA came to us last year and asked for money, they were desperate for money, and uh, we had votes on where to offset the money so we didn't add to the debt. Twice, Congressman Boswell voted for electric cars. Nancy Pelosi wanted him to vote for electric cars, and he did, rather than to uh, the flood disaster relief that FEMA was begging for money for. And it was, uh, I, I still find it hard to believe. But the problem with, with the management... Uh, of the river is the master manual and this has been litigated and litigated every time uh, in the 90s and uh, early uh, uh, early on when that was being discussed they got lawsuit after lawsuit when the army corps of engineers is allowed to actually do their job they do it extraordinarily well and they are very very helpful work with communities but they're restricted by the master manual and that's what's got to change to put people before all the other interests all right thank you very much congressman and now we go to uh, david rosenfeld 
Natural disasters, they can't be prevented. Floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, obviously this is just part of living on planet Earth. But in this society, who pays the price disproportionately for these disasters? Who suffers the most? Any objective view of this shows that it's working people, it's poor people, that get hit the hardest and that have the least help to deal with this. Who's living in the floodplains? Who's impacted by this? Um, to, the idea that the, the Army Corps of Engineers is a competent uh, uh, organization that's uh, defending us against natural disasters is, is really preposterous. I have one word to answer that. It's Katrina. Um, and this is, uh, it's these kinds of things where uh, uh, disasters that can be prevented, where uh, societies can be organized in terms of where we live and where we work uh, in ways that uh, can minimize the impact of these disasters, uh, we don't have to have man-made social catastrophes. And uh, uh, it has to do with what our priorities are. And is it going to be uh, profits uh, of big business? Is it going to be who controls the prime land and real estate uh, and those kinds of things? Or is it going to, are we going to organize society based on what benefits the vast majority? And those are the kind of questions that get posed around these natural disasters and floods around the drought that took place this year. But the, and these are the things that working people have a real interest in fighting to, to defend ourselves in the face of a capitalist government. All right, thank you very much, David. Here, our next question concerns, we, we touched on the tax code earlier in a previous question. We're going to delve into this a little bit more with this question. Do you support the continuation of the Bush, the Bush tax cuts? Let me repeat that. Do you support the continuation of the Bush tax cuts? If so, why? If not, what other measures would you support to stimulate the U.S. economy? All right. Let's go now uh, to start things off with this question to Scott Thatcher. Scott? Uh, thank you again. Um, here again, uh, stimulating the economy is, is something that we're not going to be able to do overnight, unfortunately. However, we have to start making progress towards that. And right now in Washington, nobody is making progress towards that. They've known about the deficits for how many years and have, have, have done absolutely nothing to, to slow the spending or to correct that. Um, many of the things that as we, we look at the economy and we look at uh, jobs, as you mentioned, is that we have to be able to uh, really articulate where our, our efforts need to be spent. One of the things that we mentioned before, like we talked about the Corps of Engineers, we don't follow best practices in this country. And if we started developing best practices on how, because we've been through this before, we've been in, in recessions. I remember in the 70s going through recessions and, and going through these downturns. And we don't learn from these experiences and we don't make changes that are necessary within um, the government to be able to learn from these experiences and make it us better as we move down the road. And those are some of the things that we have to start to do is we have to incorporate a, a, a much better way of addressing these things before they happen, not after they happen. All right, thank you, Scott. And now we go to Congressman Tom Latham. Tom? Well, uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, I think it's extremely important for uh, people to have certainty going forward, and that's why in the House of Representatives we have passed a, a year-long extension of the current tax law, which, uh, you know, you call it the Bush taxes, whatever, uh, but to give us certainty, to give us time next year to actually do an overall overhaul of the, uh, the entire tax code to basically, uh, with the idea of lowering rates to make us more competitive. Scott was talking about how we're not competitive overseas, uh, but to make us more competitive, lower tax rates. Do and you'll start with a blank sheet of paper as far as where the loopholes are, to, and uh, if we need to have deductions, put those in. But st don't start out, you know, taking things out of the current tax code. We've got to throw the whole thing away and start over. And you could actually uh, reduce rates, uh, doing away with loopholes, increase revenues for the federal government, and actually have an economy that would be working would generate. Uh, more and more revenue for the Treasury. The best thing we can do, certainly, and how that applies to the debt, is to have people working, paying into the system, paying into Social Security, paying into Medicare, paying income taxes, have the economy vibrant and growing, and you can't do that if you're going to raise taxes on the very people who create jobs and who are the engines of, of, of growth for this country. All right, thank you very much, Congressman. And now, David Rosenfeld. David? 
Well, I think we need to stop pretending that this economy can be 